really a pleasure for me to be here and to take part in this meeting honoring uh, Deepak Dao. Uh, we have known each other for many years, but we never collaborated really. Now, this thing I'm going to talk about is, I would say, as close to collaboration as possible with, with both uh, Tridib and Satya, former PhD students of uh, Tridib, uh, of uh, Deepak, who are, who are on this project. Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, local drive in, in, in systems. And the, the, this work was done in collaboration with Tridib and the Satya some time ago, a long time ago. And there is a second part of it, which I'll elaborate on this time together with Yarif Kafri, uh, Idan Bendor and uh, Arya uh, Turner from the Technion. Okay, so the problem is the following. It's typically known that uh, systems um, um, out of equilibrium, <laughs> they show very long range correlation. Um, yeah, this is unlike equilibrium, where if you make a local perturbation, you know, the, 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 the effect of it is really local. Now, uh, what I'm going to discuss is the effect of local drive, a pump, like if you have a fluid and you have a local pump and you, you drive it, you generate some current in a diffusive fluid and ask what's the effect of that. And in particular, later uh, in the second part of the talk, I want to talk about uh, how does it affect the steady state at criticality? When the fluid is at criticality, uh, what is the effect of the local pump? Now the local pump, uh, when fluid is not at criticality, it generates some long range correlations as usual in driven systems. Here there is also the, the long range correlations coming from criticality and the question is what's the, uh, you know, the interference between these two effects, okay? So possible realizations, for example, you can think of, um, you know, colloids, um, say in two dimensions, and you can make the drive by, by local, um, by laser, uh, which traps the colloid and just push it around in some points. And that's how you can generate this uh, pump. Or you can, uh, uh, you can think as was shown in this paper by group of uh, Yariv, that active systems, when you put in active systems, an ob uh, obstacle which is not symmetric, it acts like a pump and it can be uh, realized here. Okay, main result is the following. If you uh, put a drive uh, in a, just a fluid, not critical, you are going to generate a density profile, which is like a potential of a dipole. Okay, it's F dot R, R to, divided by R to the D, D is the dimension. Then if you look at, but, but this is, okay. Uh, if you look at the correlation function of say density, density correlation function, some distances, it acts like a quadrupolar potential. So in 2D dimensions, it's, a, it's a, um, so, so the, the correlation function of the density goes like, uh, the, the distance to the power 2D. So it's like a quadrupolar field. Um, okay. Um, we show that the density profile of the system, of the pump, the density profile um, is the same as that. Okay. This is an, uh, quite an uh, interesting point. What, what we are going to show that in fact, if you, the density profile generated by a local drive which is a non-equilibrium steady state, is the same as that of an equilibrium steady state, but with a local field, with a non-local field, with some magnetic field, with some ordering field, but it's non-local. So, so that gives us a, some kind of, if you want to calculate the density profile, you can calculate it through the equilibrium uh, problem rather than the non-equilibrium, which is a great advantage. I'll talk about it. Uh, as we go along. And at criticality, we find, for example, that the density profile is governed by the critical exponents of the fluid in equilibrium. So, so the critical exponents enter into the, uh, into the, uh, into the expression. Uh, it's, not, it's not just a dipolar field. And it's, there is some interesting crossover um, uh, behavior 
uh, small r and, and large r uh, in d equals two and three. So in particular, we find the following, that um, at criticality, the density profile, the average density profile, the deviation from the average is uh, given by this dipolar field to the power one over delta. Delta is the critical exponent delta uh, of, the, of the fluid. Yeah. So in, in D equals two and three, delta is either 15 or four or so, whatever. Um, uh, this is at large distances, distances which are larger than the correlation length of the system. On the other hand, at small distances, um, the, the expression is different. And what you have here uh, is just this expression where eta, again, is the eta critical exponent of the fluid, and there is a crossover. So in, in pictorially, it looks like that as a function of R, you look at the, at, the, uh, um, at the density profile, the way it decays away from the uh, pump, which is located here, it behaves this way at short distances and that way at very long distances. Okay, so basically that's your... At criticality, you mean near criticality? No, I mean at criticality. Okay, that's it. Okay. Um, you, you see, as I said, uh, at criticality, um, we, okay, we, we, we express the, the density profile in terms of the system with an ordering field. So you put an ordering field at the critical temperature, and that generates some, uh, some correlation length which is uh, R-dependent because it's a, the, the field that you have to put there is specific and it's, uh, it's a function of R. So you have a correlation length, although you are at the critical temperature and, and okay, that's how you do it. Okay, thank you. Okay. City correlation depends on both R and S because you break because that it's S less. R and S, right. Uh, but why not function of R minus S? That because you put a because pump at there, a particular... there is a pump somewhere, so, so, that so it's the... not a function of R minus yes. S. Right. It's not translationally invariant, the system. Okay. Okay, the current, by the way, okay, that's another result. The current is the current of electric... Uh, uh, electric is, is in the form of electric field in the dimension. Okay, so it just... Okay, so that's the form. Okay, so the outline is, I want to talk about <coughs> local drive uh, the local drive in exclusion model. That's work that we did with 3D and uh, Satya some long time ago. And we use this exclusion model to calculate the correlation function. Also, uh, I'll just say a few words about that. And then the last part will be on uh, looking at, um, at the fluid, uh, you know, at criticality and at general temperature, basically, and uh, see what happens there. Okay, so this is the setup, uh, lattice gas model. First, let's just, with lattice gas model, you have particles, say in two dimensions, just as to demonstrate things, um, and particles hope with weight one from uh, in one side to nearest neighbor side. And uh, of course, there is exclusion, no, no two particles on the same side. And you ask, there is a, you can take a variable tau i, which is zero and one, whether there is a particle uh, on a side or not. And phi i is the average of the thermal average of tau i. And you ask what is the behavior of the, um, the density, average density phi i, and it obeys this equation, this simple equation. Uh, the, the fact that you have exclusion does not really enter into the problem because it just cancels out and you get that's the usual diffusion equation. Okay, that's just for simple fluid, no drive. Now you put, you want to add a drive, how do you add it? You add it by picking in one, on one link, you change the rate of hopping. Uh, the rate of hopping to the right here is one minus epsilon and the rate to the left, one plus epsilon. All the other rates are one, okay? So that's, that's the pump, that's the pump. Uh, you write down the equation here, it's, it, and it's easy to see that it's just the same equation as before for any site which is not the two sites around the pump, but the, two, the equations at the two sites is going to change. And it's going to change in this way. It just delta R zero, delta R minus one. It just changes the, these two sides. And it has uh, this term that is uh, proportional to that, okay? Now, uh, what you see here is that the correlation function tau zero, tau one enters here. And in fact, if you want to solve it, you have to solve everything um, 
uh, you have to go to correlation functions, etc., and and uh, calculate it. But but the the point is that the equation is basically that of an electric uh, potential with with a electric uh, potential with a dipole setting at the two edges of the drive, and uh, the the potential the the the, the, the charge is just given by this expression. So this is just a number. If it happens to be non-zero, then it's clearly you are going to have a dipolar field and the phi is going to behave like a dipolar field, okay? Now the correlation function can be in principle calculated perturbatively, for example, in epsilon. In epsilon is the uh, strength of the pump. And in fact, to leading order in epsilon, it just looks like that. So clearly this is a non-zero, the current, the, the charge is non-zero and you can calculate it to any order that you like and that's how you solve the problem. Okay, the current is just given by the gradient of the potential at any site which is not at the site of the pump. And so it's the gradient of the potential is just the electric field. So it's the electric field or it's the form of the electric field of a, a di dipole. Now the simulations, okay, you can see that this is along X uh, axis, you know, along the axis of the, in two dimensions, along the axis of the drive. This is uh, the, the, this is the ex one with exclusion. This is without exclusion. And you see that it decays like one over R as expected. Okay, two point correlation function. Now in uh, what we are interested in the correlation function between size R and S and as, pointed out here before, it's, it's not translationally invariant, that it's just independent function of R and S. Now in one dimension, if you do it in one dimension, um, it, it has been shown in this paper by, uh, you know, Derrida and Debovitz, that it's, the, it takes this form. That is the scaling function, it, is, it takes a scaling form with L. L is the system size. And it, this correlation uh, goes like one over L. That is, it goes to zero, in the limit of large L. Uh, this is not the case here, and because in, in, in the case of if you go to higher dimension, because uh, the, the reason it, it goes like one over L here is because it goes with the current. And when L goes, or an L is very large, the current goes to zero when L is large because it's just one dimension, you drive it, the, the gradient is one over L. On the other hand, in, if you go to uh, in two dimensions, you are going to generate currents uh, which are independent of, of the system size. And therefore this is not the case. And in fact, the correlation function is going to depend on, on R and S, uh, uh, you know, and it will not go to zero in the limit of L goes to infinity. Now, I just want to hint about the calculation and then go uh, uh, move forward. You have this, a correlation function, uh, you write down the equation uh, for, for C. You, know, you can see that the equation is not going to change. If R and S are not nearest neighbor to each other, it's just this Laplace equation. This is nothing, it's Laplace, but in four dimensions, it's in R and S. And so it's in, yeah, in 2D dimensions, if you want. On the other hand, if you look at R and S, which are close to each other, that either R is equal to S or our nearest neighbor to S, you are generate some other terms. And therefore the equation, uh, the full equation for everything, it looks like the delta in 2D dimensions of CRS is equal to some expression of uh, R and S. And, and this is like, again, electrostatic problem in, uh, in 2D dimensions, if you happen to know this sigma. Now this sigma, uh, you can, it's, it's really spread, it's spread, but you can, uh, along the lines of uh, R is equal to S or R, or R and S are at, at the drive. But in fact, you can, if you try to estimate that, you can see that these charges are localized. That is, they decay very fast and this, they are uh, of quadrupolar form. So it's as if you have a quadrupole at the origin and therefore the, the, the correlation function in this 2D dimension is going to decay at large distances when R and S are large and they are away from the drive uh, and they are away from each other, they are going to decay in this form like a quadrupole in 2D dimensions and basically that's... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Okay, so that's what I wanted to say. Um, uh, through, uh, okay, and let me now go move forward and look at the. Okay, so this is basically what happens at the, with the local pump uh, at infinite temperature, right? The, the, there is it's it's hard. Uh, it's you have exclusion. Uh, there is no energy in the problem, and it's basically like uh, uh, infinite temperature. The question is what happened at finite at finite temperature, and particularly what happens at criticality, and that's the uh, the second part of the talk. Uh, so uh, okay, so the uh, the way to study it is to look at model B dynamics. That is, you start with some free energy. This is interacting gas fluid. Uh, so you have free energy, which looks like phi squared and phi to the phi four theory, and interacting fluid and within the model B dynamics that is the model that you uh, conserve you know you make a kind of Kawasaki dynamics you conserve um, the density uh, the, 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 the rules are the following you calculate the chemical potential which is mu zero which is just the um, df0 d5 that's the chemical potential then there is a current as, which goes with the gradient of the uh, proportional to the gradient of the um, chemical potentials. So, so that's uh, where M is just the mobility. Now, um, when you want to add the pump to the problem, then the current is J0, is the current that comes from the interacting particles. Plus, there is a delta function at the origin, which is again with the same M, plus noise. So, so basically, that's the problem you want to calculate and the equation of uh, and d phi dt phi is the, the um, density the local density is just minus the gradient of j so that's basically the setup of the problem um, okay uh, we can average over the noise okay to get rid of the noise you can make the average so uh, noise goes away and then you have this is just j zero plus the delta function that comes from the, uh, from the pump, okay? Uh, so d phi t t is just the uh, divergence of the, minus the divergence of the current, it, this is the uh, equation. And, and uh, in steady state, basically the equation is just del squared of m zero is just the gradient of this delta function. Okay, it's the, the divergence of f times the delta. Okay, so that's uh, the equation that you have to solve if you want to find the. Um, the okay, so you get for m, uh, mu zero. Uh, mu zero is again uh, the chemical potential which comes from the uh, free energy, which is just that. That's the average. Okay. Uh, now, if you look at this, you see that mu zero average is just generated. It basically behaves like it, it satisfies the Poisson equation of a dipolar field uh, generating, generated by dipolar field. And therefore, mu zero is just basically a dipolar, um, like it behaves like a dipolar potential. So we know that. Now the current, if we know if mu zero is just has a dipolar potential form, mu zero again is that the current is just the gradient of mu zero, right? It's just the divergence of the field, and therefore the current is just uh, given by electric the form of electric field, which is the gradient of of mu of of mu zero, which is a dipole potential. Uh, the the the, the, the current is just the gradient of that, or you know, okay, and and it's of this form. And this is independent of temperature. It's a high temperature, low temperature, critical temperature. This is a independent, and it should look like that. The question is, what happens to the density profile? Okay. Okay. So let's look at the density profile. What I want to show is that, in fact, um, okay, we have to solve this equation. And knowing that mu zero is can be expressed in terms of the uh, density profile. Now, we can show that in fact this problem is equivalent to a problem of a, a fluid in a field in an ordering field which is of dipolar form in equilibrium. 
Okay, so 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 the two problems are the following. One is the 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 pump, the local pump uh, put at the origin, which is non-equilibrium steady state. The other one is just a fluid, which is okay. Here is a magnetic, like a magnetic Ising model, magnetic system, which is put in an ordering field H R, which behave, which is of the form of a dipolar potential everywhere. Okay. If you solve the density profile in this problem, it's the same density profile as that. Okay, that, that's the point. And therefore, this, okay, so basically that's the message. I mean, that's a very important point of this uh, talk that you take this non equilibrium steady state and you can say it's the same as that of some equilibrium uh, problem with a given uh, ordering field. So this has a tremendous uh, advantage because we can use whatever is known about magnet, you know, the, or the, the, the equilibrium steady state, and a lot is known, particularly at criticality, um, to, to calculate the, uh, the profile. Um, it also has a great numerical advantage because if you want to study, for example, the current in the system or whatever, at, particularly at criticality, uh, there is a slowing down, and that's highly costly if you do it in a non equilibrium uh, um, system. Here, since you are talking about equilibrium, you don't have to stick to, to local dynamics or conserving dynamics. You have a Hamiltonian, you have an energy, you can study it with the cluster, you know, you can uh, use um, algorithms which involve cluster flipping or whatever to quickly reach the steady state. And, and that's a great advantage to, to, to in this respect. Um, uh, okay, so, so this is particularly important when you talk about uh, at criticality, when the fluid is at criticality, when you have a slowing down effects. How much time do I have? Uh, oh, okay, so I'm, I'm good. Okay, so, so we have to solve uh, this um, so okay so now I want to show how does where does the, this equivalence between these two problems comes uh, so we have to solve this equation uh, uh, del squared of mu zero is the chemical potential is just the gradient of the delta function which is basically the pump now we can use to, okay so there is a f uh, f uh, times delta r is just a vector field right and the vector field, it can, we can use the Helmholtz decomposition to write it as a gradient of some scalar plus, plus V, which is a divergent free field. Okay, so you just sum of two things. Now, um, uh, okay, so if you take the divergence of, of, the, um, of the drive, of the drive uh, clearly when you take the divergence of this, then the V term drops out and in fact, the, the, the divergence of this um, F is just del squared of H, okay? And therefore, um, and again, this H is a dipolar, uh, is a potential dip dipole because it satisfies this equation. It's just uh, electrostatic equation or, uh, uh, which is generated with a, with a potential generated by a, um, dipole and therefore H has to be of this form. Okay, and V does not enter into the equation here. So, so the story is the following: um, we start with this equation of the drive. It is the same as that equation with uh, so del squared mu zero is del squared of H, with H is equal to to that to the uh, is basically given by the dipolar potential. Okay. Uh, now, this is this problem, the, the, this is therefore the same problem as uh, uh, mu zero is, is given by the same problem as if we take F, which is F zero as before, but add a, a term which is H times phi uh, integrated over the system. It's as if there is an ordering field on the system, uh, um, which is of this form, uh, and they give the same equation. Okay, so, so this problem uh, here is equivalent, uh, which is this non, okay, basically, which is derived from the non-equilibrium system, 
is, is given by the same, uh, the, the steady state is given by the equilibrium state of a system with this free energy. That's, that's the upshot of the story. Okay. Okay, so, the, so, so we have to basically uh, look at, uh, okay, then we are free to use any dynamics we want because we just have a free energy. We are interested in the equilibrium state. We can just take Glauber dynamics or whatever dynamics. And we, the equation is just minimize the free energy and that, that's the equation we have to solve. With H of R is a dipolar field which is spread all over. Okay, so now we have to look at various regimes, okay? So what happens, uh, let's look at the paramagnetic regime first, okay? In the paramagnetic regime, okay, this is a free energy. Uh, it means that tau is positive, right? But tau is positive, tau is T minus TC, that's the, um, tau is the parameter that controls the phase transition. So uh, if tau is positive, we can uh, safely ignore the del square term, we can also ignore the phi cube term, and we get an equation which is tau times phi is equal to h. And therefore, phi of r is just basically equal to that. It's the same, it's proportional to, to, to the dipolar uh, form that we had before, to the field, which is of dipolar uh, uh, potential. And therefore, um, it's the same result as we got for the, for the SEP model, for the exclusion model, but it applies here not only at infinite temperature, but uh, throughout the paramagnetic, the par uh, throughout the disordered regimes. Okay. What happens at criticality? At criticality, uh, okay, uh, we note that, which is tau is equal to zero, we note that there is a correlation length, okay, since we have a field, there is a correlation length, local correlation length associated with the field. And this correlation length uh, locally goes like H to some power, which is known power, uh, um, given by the critical exponents of the, uh, of the system. And, uh, but it's local, okay? H is a function of R in this way. And, and there is, therefore, the system has a correlation length, which depends on the distance from, from the drive. Basically, because the field, and clearly at infinity, the correlation length is, in, is infinite. Uh, I mean, when, when you are far away from the drive, it's, it's infinite, and that's criticality. That's a criticality that we mean. But if you get close to the uh, drive, there is some correlation length uh, in the system. Okay, so one can distinguish between two regimes, R larger than psi or R smaller than psi, okay? Okay, in the limits that are much larger than psi, uh, you remember H is this, and for R much larger than psi, if you take R plus psi, replace R to R plus psi, it doesn't change much. It's basically the same. So on a scale of psi, it's basically a constant. And if you have a constant, local field, uh, we know that the order parameter goes like the field to the power one over delta. And therefore, the, the phi of R is going to behave like the dipolar form to the power one over delta. Okay, so that's at large distances. Okay, so, okay, so, but that's a, that's a big change because one delta in two dimensions, for example, is 15. So, so if, if you look at the angular form of this, which is, um, you know, away from criticality is cosine theta, now it's going to be cosine theta to the power one over delta. So, so that's, uh, that's what you see here. Uh, this is at high temperature, T equals 2, C, 2 Tc, and you look at the density uh, uh, um, on a circle around the, 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 the the pump, and you see that it's just a kind of cosine, while at criticality, which is supposed to go like one over 15, so this is the result of the simulations, and the black line is basically the, the curve that we expect. This is at r larger than uh, r star, that is at large r, when, when the correlation length, um, when r is much larger than the correlation length. On the other hand, if r, 
is less than the correlation length, much less than the correlation length, then H of R varies from point to point, and you have to look at linear response. So the phi is just, uh, you know, there is a, the correlation function, the linear, which comes from the linear response times H of R. And we know that at criticality, uh, the G of R is just one over R to the power D minus two plus eta. Eta is the critical exponent uh, uh, at, at criticality of the fluid. And again, H of R is just the dipolar potential. And you can do that and you see that you can, um, you know h of r, you know g, you can calculate it, and phi of r turns out to be f dot r divided by r to the power d minus two plus eta. So it's a very different behavior. Yeah, and so this is uh, it again the same uh, thing here at r, which is smaller at small r. This is again at high temperature. That's the cosine, and it remains cosine even at T C. At small r. Okay, what is the course over distance? There is a course over distance between the two. You can estimate it. And uh, so we know that xi is h to some power. h is a function of r. And you ask when, when xi of r is equal to r, you have to solve this equation basically. And what you find is that r star, that's the, when the course over takes place, goes like f to the power s f is the strength of the pump the strength so it goes like f to the s where s is given by the critical exponent this critical exponent it's interesting to note that in d equals two and three this s is negative meaning that r star diverges when f goes to zero and therefore it's meaningful to look at both regimes of small below r star and above r star because the, 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 the regime where, uh, which is when, when R is small, smaller than R star, again, is inf infinitely long because R star goes to infinity. At higher, in higher dimensions, four and above, uh, S is positive, and therefore the, this short distance regime does not show up at all. But here it shows up in D equals two and D equals three. Okay, so this is the story pictorially. Uh, a small distance, this is the behavior. At large distance, this is the behavior. The, the course over uh, distance goes like F to the S. F is the strength of the, um, uh, the, strength of the dipole. And uh, uh, okay, okay, that's the story. Uh, now, I wanted to note that in D equals two, particularly, uh, this function at the short distance behavior, uh, uh, the, the density profile increases with R. Usually you expect you have a pump, but it's going to decrease, right? the perturbation is going to decrease. But here it's going to increase because if you take D equals two, for example, there is R, R there and eta is small. Uh, and um, it's going to increase, but eventually it goes to R larger than R star and it's going to decrease. So it's, it's, it's non-monotonic even. Okay, so this is basically the, uh, uh, I'm done. Okay, so basically I'm going. So, so that's, that's, these are the results. These are, uh, this is high, this, this column is high temperature. These two columns are at critical temperature. One is below R star, and this is above R star, and this is below the critical temperature, which I did not discuss. What you see here is these are the, the angular behavior that I showed you before. And this is the, the way the order parameter decays with distance uh, and with the fit to the exponents that we, we discussed. What you see here, that at least in this, this is in two dimensions, that indeed the density inc first increases uh, at small r, and then it decreases at when r is larger than r. So that's what I wanted to show here. This is the same thing in three dimensions where we have cuts. Um, uh, this is along the z equals zero plane, but it's the same story. What you see here, for example, that the, the angular behavior goes like cosine theta to the power two, roughly two, uh, which is much smoother than what we had in two dimensions, and it fits very well. Um, 
uh, this is the current profiles. The, for the currents, you have to actually, you, you cannot resort to cluster dynamics. You have to do the actual dynamics and therefore the system, the system size is small. But what you see here that the current indeed bore above, below and at critical temperature decays like one over R squared. It's independent of all these uh, uh, issues of the density profile. And basically this is the summary of what I uh, said, that the density profile uh, with a, of a pump looks like generically like a dipolar potential. The, the correlation function is like a quadrupolar potential in two in 2D dimensions. Um, um, the density, okay, the important point is that the density profile is equivalent to that of an equilibrium pro problem with a, uh, with a ordering field, which is basically the dipolar field. This H of R is a dipolar field. Um, uh, as a result, we can calculate uh, the density profile and express it in terms of the critical exponents of the fluid. This is the uh, crossover behavior that we discussed. And the current profile is always uh, di uh, of dipolar of the polar electric field. So with that, I will finish. Yeah, I'm sorry, can we just wait for the microphone so people online can? Yeah, so despite this uh, mapping to equilibrium for some properties or close relation to equilibrium for some properties, Presumably there are signatures of broken detail balance apart from the current itself, or are there not? Local detail balance. No, broken detail balance. Oh, broken detail balance. I mean, the fact that, the, you know. Yeah, well, you, you have the current, of you course. Have the current, you but have are the, there other more, I mean, other You can signatures? think of any, you know, I would say that's a, yeah. I'm sure there are, I but the, yeah, it depends on the dynamics. Yeah, I'm sure there are, I but okay. I cannot think. Of so this one, like uh, for R less than R star, you have this one by D to the power, right, one right. by R to the power D minus two right. plus eta. Sorry? No, for R less than R star, you have this one by. Right. Yeah. So is eta as a function of R minus R star known for R less than R star? Or? Eta is the critical exponent eta of the fluid at equilibrium. But that, you said that probably depends on R, how far away from R star or no? No, no, no. So no. It's, eta, eta is the usual critical exponent of, uh, of. Okay. So eta, there is a jump, is it? There at r equal to r star, then. Uh, yeah. So eta is 0. 0.25 in two dimensions and 0. 0.036 in three dimensions. So then, as I cross r star, there is a jump uh, in the behavior. Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, a one be well, you know, there is a crossover from one behavior to another. So if you are very, sh if you are much less, you know, at, at distances which are much less than R star, it behaves this way. And then if there is a smooth crossover, this is and smooth. then at the distances which are much larger than R star, it behaves this way. Okay. Where with delta here is given by these numbers. Okay. So it's just the usual crossover, you know, you have two types of behavior. Uh, and the point is that in d equals two and three, this r star goes to infinity. So, so you still have room for for this short distance uh, behavior. So, sorry. So, if you have several sources, um, five or six, yeah, yeah. then the same treatment will go through. Oh, absolutely. But uh, then, for yeah. t less than t c. Yes. The orderings could be different in the different yeah, cases, yeah. Well, and that can be quite complicated. That and could interesting. be quite complicated. Uh, Usually, it, what mm. happens is that the drive orders, if you are below TC, mm. it drives it that uh, you know uh, there is a mm. you, there is a domain wall, mm. and it's positive to the right, negative mm. to the left, and then if you put all kinds mm. of dipoles like that, then you can have all kinds of things. That has not been no, we did steady. not explore. Okay. Mm. Yeah. We explored it for a single uh, drive, but not for many. Um, yeah, no, I just wanted to go back to the model, which is that you, on one bond, there is something different. Right, right. So that is clearly like a dipolar. 
I'm just uh, it's a drive. Why quadrupolis angular symmetry can arise? Can you give us some? Well, in the correlation function. In the correlation function. Um, yeah, we, well, it's, it becomes a problem in two, two D dimensions because you look at R and you have two points. Uh, and, and that's, you know, you have to look at, you, you, you know, you, you had this picture with the, car, with the with, um, uh, charge distributions along the diagonals and along this. And you have to study the way uh, these charges are distributed. You can use very nice symmetry uh, uh, properties when the density is a half. When the average density is a half, there are some some uh, some symmetry properties that enter into the system, and you can uh, show it very explicitly that the leading term is quadrupolar. Basically, you move, you make a multipolar expansion, and you can show that the dipolar term vanishes. Somewhere. Okay, I have two quick questions. One is: Is there any experimental realization of this in the lab? And two. Is there a model H calculation of it also? Um, okay, realizations, I, I mentioned, uh, you know, possible potential realizations uh, at the beginning. One is if you have colloidal, uh, uh, you know, if you have a, collo uh, you know, colloids, and you can drive locally by a, a laser uh, trap. So you put a laser trap and then you push it uh, in the middle. Uh, um, this is a type of experiment that Yael Reuchmann from Tel Aviv University, uh, she is carrying out and, and it's possible to study it there in principle. And she put some effort into uh, this kind of thing. The other, the other po possible <coughs> realization as mentioned by Yariv um, in his work uh, is if you, if you look at active systems, with, with an obstacle which is not symmetric, this acts like a pump, you know, the equations are there. So, so that's another place where one can study this kind of thing. Regarding the H model, we haven't studied it, but I understand that it's, um, uh, Yariv is putting some effort into that. So I wonder if you have something like a fluctuation dissipation, you showed some linear response at some point, you had a response function, could you calculate phi phi correlations? Are they related? Yeah, local. Yeah, yeah. In linear response, you have the linear response. So, so then the field is small. You know, it's a low. So it's you make a local perturbation. Uh, you know, uh, and so. Oh, no, then is is that the global temperature throughout? Sorry. Is is the is the constant the global temperature for the system, or is this a local version of the FTT? It's a local. You know, because the, the field is is varies with R. So maybe I. Uh, hi, uh, I don't know if you probably already mentioned this, but uh, if you have like multiple, suppose you have multiple drives, local drives with slightly different rates, right? right. Uh, does this mapping to the e effective equilibrium problem go through, or is it? Uh, yes, yes, it should go through. Yeah. Even, 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 if, even if you have a large number of local drives. Yeah. I, yes. Yes. If you, if you, you know, if you. Look at uh, uh, local, suppose these local drives uh, are in some local region in space yeah. and you look at the far field, you know, then you can even, you know, look at multiple, you know, multiple expansion and then see what's the effect there depending on the, the so it's, it, each one of them is generated, that generates a dipole and basically you have to look at the, Away from the region where the the, the, the char, you know, the, the pumps are, then then you can do that. Okay, okay, but if the number of local drives scale with the system size, oh, then a then it's story. That's a story. okay. Thanks, thanks. There are no further quick questions, uh, so let's thank David thank for a wonderful thank talk. You.